Because of its unique characteristics, hydraulic power is one of the most widely used forms of energy transmission in industry. Hydraulic systems allow the precise control of force, speed, and direction in a variety of applications. From giant machines like this that lift and move tremendous weight, to machines like this one that perform the same task over and over. This course is intended to help you understand how hydraulic systems work. Let's begin with the physical world of a machine and look at some of the principles that affect the operation of machines. The first of these principles is force. Machines perform work by moving a belt, a rod, or some other part from one place to another. To do that, some type of force is necessary. It takes force to move any object. That's because all objects exert a force of their own called inertia. Inertia is the natural resistance that an object has to any change in its motion. In order to get this ball moving, we have to apply enough force to overcome its inertia. How much inertia an object has depends on its mass. The heavier an object is, the more force it takes to start it moving, to change its direction, or to stop it once we get it moving. Since the bowling ball has more mass, its inertia is greater than that of the soccer ball. If we hit each ball with the same force, the bowling ball resists the change in motion more than the soccer ball. But notice that even though a force is applied to start the ball moving, it will slow down and eventually stop by itself. That's because of another natural force, friction. In this case, there's friction between the ball and the table surface. Friction is always present between the contact surfaces of two objects moving across each other. So besides inertia, a machine also has to apply enough force to overcome the resistance caused by friction. Now it takes energy of some kind to apply a force. Energy can occur in several different forms. Mechanical, like our swinging rod, electrical, heat, light, chemical, and even sound. These forms of energy can be converted from one to another. For example, this solar cell changes light energy to electrical energy and eventually to the mechanical energy of the rotating propeller or the chemical energy produced by mixing the substances in these tubes can be converted to light energy, and in this battery, to electrical energy. Most hydraulic systems take electrical energy and convert it to the mechanical energy required at the point of work. Another characteristic of energy is its state or condition. Energy is in either a potential state or a kinetic state. Potential energy is energy that is stored, waiting to be changed into kinetic energy. As long as we hold this rod back, it has potential energy. When we let it go and the rod moves, the potential energy is released and becomes kinetic energy. The same principle is true for this battery. The chemicals in the battery store energy in a potential state. As soon as we tap the battery, we convert the energy to a kinetic state so it can be used to actually perform work. Now, we said earlier that machines are designed to do work, but what do we mean by work? Well, by definition, work is a force that is applied for a distance. Written out in equation form, it looks like this. Force in pounds times distance in feet equals work measured in foot-pounds. Let's take a look at the work this forklift is performing. If the forklift exerts a force of 2,000 pounds over a distance of 5 feet, then, according to our equation, we have 2,000 pounds of force times a distance of 5 feet equals 10,000 foot-pounds of work. Now, if we add time to this equation, we come up with another important concept called power. Power is the rate or speed at which work is done. The equation for power looks like this. Power equals work divided by time, or it can be written power equals force times distance over time. A common unit for measuring power is horsepower. 
The inventor James Watt originally devised horsepower to compare the power of his steam engine to the power of a horse. His experiments found that a horse could move a load of 550 pounds over a distance of one foot every second. So one horsepower is equal to 550 foot-pounds of work per second. Written out in equation form, horsepower can be seen as distance times force over time divided by 550. Sometimes the power of a machine is measured in watts or kilowatts instead of horsepower. A kilowatt is 1,000 watts. It takes 745 watts or 0.745 kilowatts to equal one horsepower. Now, one more concept to understand when we're working with machines is pressure. Pressure is the measure of a force's intensity. We calculate pressure by dividing the force by the total area to which it's applied. So we have pressure measured in pounds per square inch equals force in pounds divided by area in square inches. For example, a 100 pound weight with a base of 100 square inches would exert a pressure of one pound per square inch on the surface upon which it sits. If we place the same 100 pound load on an area of one quarter square inch, the pressure is now 400 pounds per square inch. This principle explains how a woman weighing only 100 pounds can produce more than 1,000 pounds per square inch of pressure with a spike heel, while a broader heel of, say, one square inch area would only exert 100 pounds of pressure per square inch. Pressure is the result of a force meeting a resistance. For example, in a hydraulic system, when the kinetic energy of the fluid moving in this line meets the resistance of the cylinder and its load, pressure is created. The combination of this kinetic energy and pressure gives us what is called working energy. And it is this working energy that we need to apply at the point of work. Often a machine's source of energy is not at the point where we want work done. Therefore, we must get it to the point of use. We can transmit energy mechanically through devices such as levers, gears, pulleys, or belts, electrically through wires, pneumatically by channeling compressed air through pipes or tubing, or we can transmit it hydraulically. In a hydraulic system, energy in the form of a pressurized liquid is transmitted through piping or tubing to the point of work. The working energy of the pressurized liquid is converted to mechanical energy through the use of various types of actuators. However, not all of the working energy in our hydraulic system ends up producing useful work. As the pressurized fluid moves through the hoses, some of its working energy is converted to heat energy because of friction. The energy lost due to friction prevents any hydraulic system from operating at 100% efficiency. Often, an industrial hydraulic system will operate at less than 70% efficiency. That means if we put in 10 horsepower, we get out less than 7, with most of the missing 3 horsepower having been lost to friction throughout the system. In our next lesson, entitled Hydraulic Transmission of Force and Energy, we'll take a closer look at the way hydraulic systems create and maintain the fluid pressure they need to perform work.